Alan Stratton from Meswood Turns. Last week I made this eccentric wand. Very powerful indeed, eccentric, and has the phoenix feather in the handle. But one thing I appreciate from the wood turning community is when people leave comments. For example, Pete TGIF, who I believe is from Germany, commented about the pressure between the headstock and the tailstock that was causing my spindle to flex, and suggested that using masking tape on the headstock and backing off the pressure would still drive the piece, but uh, lessen the pressure. I decided on this one to up the ante a little bit and make it doubly eccentric, so that not just the tailstock will be offset, but the headstock will be offset also. To do this, I made a pair of wooden face blades. Headstock, tailstock, threaded to fit. The difference here is that the there's holes a quarter inch apart, radiating out from the center, in which to provide the offset. Then with just a piece of brass rod drilled into the end of the spindle, I can offset it using actually two pieces of brass rod, offset it just a little bit each time. And on this one, I offset it on both the headstock and tailstock in opposite directions. So, let's make today a double eccentric magic wand. This oak is about 12 inches long and about one inch square. I'll rough it on the center axis just to knock off the corners. When I made the face plates, I gang drilled several pieces of formica, two for the face plates and the others to use as drilling templates. I've used one of those formica templates to pre-drill holes on both ends of the spindle. I'll pre-mark the approximate divisions for each segment of the wand's blade. Then shift the axis one quarter inch on the headstock and one quarter inch the opposite way on the tailstock end. This will be the first offset segment. I'll turn this with a medium spindle gouge. And I'll sand this segment now while it's in this axis position. Now to shift to the second segment. I'll put the brass pin in a hole 90 degrees from the first one. This pin will go in the faceplate center hole. The second brass pin goes in the wand's center hole and the faceplate's offset hole. On the other end, I make sure that the pin placement is diagonally opposite. Then more careful spindle gouge work. Maybe Alan Lacer could use a skew, but I'm not ready for that. Be sure to sand and finish before moving on. Time for another transition. It's getting more routine. Pull the pins, insert the pin in the corner hole 90 degrees from the last one. This will go in the faceplate center hole. Second pin goes in the one center hole and the faceplate's offset hole. And back to the gouge. This is the final offset transition. I'm being careful to place the pins in the correct holes. On the opposite end of the blade, I'm making sure the pins are directly opposite those on the other end. Then double checking that I get them in the right holes in the tailstock face blade. Now back to the center axis. After all those offsets, this should be a piece of cake. I turn a small transition from the fourth offset, then form the mounting tenon with tenon cutters. Next time I will use shorter brass pins. I think one quarter inch should be sufficient. Mine were too long, so I hit them with the tenon cutters. I backed off and made the tenon a bit shorter.
Finally, I'll finish the wand's tip. Since this is for children, I'll make the tip very blunt. I hand finish the last bit of the tip after trimming both ends on a saw. What's the difference between this double eccentric wand and the last one? On the last wand, I offset only the tailstock end. Therefore, as I worked down the blades, the offsets became less. On this double eccentric blade, the segment near the handle is noticeably more offset. The center segments, number two and three, are somewhat averaged by the diagonally opposite offsets. In any case, with these simple faceplates, I can experiment to my heart's content. They provide definite, measured offsets and enable positive power transmission to the workpiece. However, I did not need so many holes. One row across the faceplate at one quarter inch spacing would have been enough. Numbering the holes on the workpiece would have helped a little. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to my As Wood Turns channel and website so I can keep you updated. Have fun and be safe. Always wear a full face shield, please. This is Alan Stratton from AsWoodTurns.com. We'll see you shortly on the next video.